Faith Lift Wednesday, our midweek hour or more of power. So we're going to have you head back over to Ephesians 4 because this is part two of something we did on Sunday. It's time to grow up, part two. Praise the Lord, Sunday was certainly something, I'll tell you. Uh, that was explosive and uh, offensive. Uh, some people certainly found it very offensive, but glory be to God. Amen. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4, I just want to remind you here in uh, verse 11, Ephesians 4, 11, Jesus gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. And in verse 12, it tells you why. For the perfecting, this is verse 12, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of of the body of Christ. So uh, the ministry gifts, as we call them, and I want to read that to you. Uh, thank you, brother. I want to read that to you from the uh, New Living. Uh, now these, these are the gifts that Christ gave to the church. Uh, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do His work and build up the church, the body of Christ. And then in, uh, in verses 14 and 15 here, in the message, the message, no prolonged infancies among us, please. We'll not tolerate babes in the woods, small children who are an easy mark for imposters. God wants us to grow up. And so I want to focus on that right there. Small children who are an easy mark for imposters. Well, Jesus clearly warned us that at the end, in Matthew 24, he spoke about this, at the end, there was going to be an overabundance of imposters. Many will come, claiming, I, you know, claiming that they are Christ. And uh, in, in verse 11 of Matthew 24, Jesus said, many false prophets shall arise, or shall rise, and shall deceive many. Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. That's in the very near future. In fact, it's happening now uh, because we are in that time that Jesus warned us about. We're in the last days. And uh, technically, I mean, if we want to get technical about it, the last days began on the day of Pentecost 2,000 years ago. And so some people may think, you know, well, listen, you guys have been talking about this last day stuff for 2,000 years. Well, technically, we've been in the last days for 2,000 years, but if you take 2,000 years, if you just think about that, and then measure it against all of eternity, what is that but nothing? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's nothing. And so, yeah, I mean, and you have to understand that God allows people to make choices and decisions on their own. You, you have the right to make choices and decisions. God doesn't violate that. So it's really important that we, you know, we just, you know, remember that, hey, listen, this, this is, it's going to happen. Just because it's taken 2,000 years is not an indicator that God has forgotten or he, or he was playing games with us. Ha <laughs> just joking. You know, there is no second coming. There is no rapture. This has all just been a fairy tale. And you guys have been duped. Ha <laughs> ha. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. You can rest assured that this is where we're at. And the signs are all there. The signals, the warnings, everything is happening as he said that it would. And so many false prophets are going to rise and deceive many. Well, we don't want you to be deceived. We don't, I don't want to be deceived. I don't want you to be deceived. We want to help people stay safe and secure from deception. That's one of the, one of the big characteristics or marks of the end times uh, is deception. You see it all around, I see it all around. So God has a program to help us. But it's God's program, it's not man's program. Man, you know, has a, has a tendency to push things off like it is God's program. And, and I've seen so much of this that, you know, this keeps coming up in me clearly for a reason. God wants you to be safe. God wants you to be aware. God doesn't want you to be like small children who are an easy mark for imposters, being duped and being deceived, okay? So, a couple things we'll look at for tonight. Uh, there are attitudes of the heart, 
attitudes. I'm calling these uh, attitudes of the heart. They're attitudes of the heart that will help or hinder you. They're going to help you avoid deception. They're going to help you to stay on the, on the right track. Or attitudes of the heart will hinder you and send you off into Never Never Land. Uh, also, to go right along with that, there are what I'm calling the officially ordained roles in the church to help us. Officially. There are official ordained roles, and we just read about them in Ephesians 4. Those are the official ordained roles. And he gave some, not all, not everybody has these, but, but there are those who think they are, and they're really not. This, this term or this uh, title, apostle, is just thrown around so loosely and so lightly today, and I have found, to go along with that, that title, prophet, is just thrown around so loosely and so carelessly. Well, come on, man. You know, if, if Jesus called you, if Jesus ordained you and set you in, that's one thing. But how would you know that? How do you know that? Well, that, that's what we're talking about. We want you to be safe and secure. I'll tell you one thing <clears throat> that you need to remember is that the office or the role of the prophet is not the same as it was in the Old Testament. See, this is very concerning to me what I'm seeing happen again. We're looking for the prophet. What, is the pro what are the prophets saying? Well, what, what prophets? The P-R-O-F-I-T? The four prophets? Is that, you know, what are we looking at here? Uh, the, the prophet, well, the, it's, it was in the Old Covenant, and you know, obviously we're in the New Covenant now, but in the Old Covenant, the, the, the prophet, the priest, and the king were anointed. It was the anointing of God that came upon them to fulfill their roles. Those three, the prophet, the priest, and the king. Well, we don't live in the Old Covenant. In fact, Jesus and the anointing and his spirit come to live within you now, but he says what those gifts are today, and yes, he, he, talks, he mentions the prophet, but it's not the same thing. So, you know, be very careful about seeking the prophet more than you seek the word that God has given your pastor for you. Be very careful about that, because I'm watching it happen here in this church. I'm seeing it happen here in this community. I'm seeing it happen throughout the nation, throughout the world. Very concerning. Well, this is what Jesus said. You got to be mindful of it now. So certain attitudes of the heart, and then there are certain uh, official ordained roles in the church to help us, which means if there are good attitudes and bad attitudes, then there are official ordained roles and unofficial or self-appointed. And But that's nothing new. You know, it's nothing new. So let, let's, let's think about this then, the attitude. The, the number one attitude that I want to uh, express or call your attention to, uh, you can make a note of this, I'll read it to you, uh, but make a note of Proverbs 16, 18. Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. Some translations say an arrogant spirit. Pride or arrogance? Pride or arrogance? An arrogant spirit. It's not okay to have that and tolerate that. Right. Now, you may not know that you're operating in that, but your pastor certainly recognizes it and knows how to deal with it. Um, pride or this arrogance or this exalting of oneself uh, according to 1 Timothy 3, 6, it's the condemnation of the devil. That's what got Satan into trouble. Well, before he was Satan, he was Lucifer. But that's what got him into trouble. And <clears throat> regardless of how spiritual or humble or even anointed someone seems, one of the ways that you can tell that they're borderline problematic is that they don't submit to anybody. They will not submit themselves to the local authority, the local pastor, the church authority. They will not submit themselves because they're above that. 
Well, I got news for you. In the local church, there is no higher authority than the local pastor. And I know, and I can tell you right now, the ones who refuse to be submissive, I, could, I, can, I can name them for you, I won't do that because that's not right to do. But I know the difference. I feel it, I sense it, I know it. And, and I mark it and I say, dear Lord, you know, I, they're beyond my help because they will not submit because they're self-exalting. Um, they, they, uh, they're exalting themselves. They have a, an arrogant spirit about them. They know better. I mean, I, I don't, you know, here's the thing. I mean, I'm, I don't claim to be any better than anybody else. I don't claim to have, you know, any special uh, advantage other than the fact that I have been called and set in by God. That doesn't make me better than anybody else. It just means that officially I am ordained to be over you in the Lord. That's not a bad thing. It's actually quite safe for you, right? A little scary for me because I have to be so mindful of my attitudes and what I say and do. So that's one of the marks, one of the ways uh, in which you can tell. I don't care what they call themselves. They call themselves apostle, prophet. They call themselves an evangelist. They call themselves a pastor or a teacher. Or they have no name or they're just a freelance minister. I call them renegade spirits is what I call them. Renegade spirits. And we're going to talk about that tonight. But one of the ways that you can note and mark them is that they do not submit themselves to the authority of a local shepherd. Or anybody, really, for that matter. Um, the pastoral office, because here uh, in, in Ephesians 4.11, uh, 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 the gifts um, of those gifts, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, um, and the teacher, really, uh, the only one that is a shepherd or has the um, responsibility of a shepherd is the pastor. That's what the word means, a shepherd. Okay. Well, if you're likened to the sheep of his pasture, the sheep of his fold, you need an under-shepherd. Well, Jesus is my shepherd. I don't need any man to teach me. Well, you see, you're misunderstanding the whole point there. So, let's look at something here because our greatest example of pride and arrogance is who? It's Lucifer. That's your greatest example. Uh, I'll give you the references. I, I, I don't, I'm not going to turn there. I'm going to give you the references. You can make a note of Ezekiel 28, verses 12 through 18, and then Isaiah 14, verses 12 through 15. Um, you can read about the arrogance and the self-exaltation of Lucifer. That's what got him into trouble. So, he is, the, he is the spirit of Antichrist, right? He is the sum total of all that's wrong. And so those whom he inspires or those who follow after him, you're going to find pride there. You're going to find a spirit of arrogance there. And the thing that's so concerning to me is that when people are full of donkey dust, when they're full of themselves, <laughs> they don't know it. I mean, if you're deceived, how do you know it? Because you're deceived. Well, if you would be submitted to the local authority uh, of the church, of the local church and of a pastor, you would have help there. But see, what I have found, and this is just my own experience in the 25 years I've been serving as your pastor, is that people run away. They, they don't want to face the music. So they just disappear. They go into hiding or, or, they, or they go church hopping. They call it shopping, but it's called church hopping. But up, 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 right? We're just shopping. Around. No, you're church hopping. And he called you a sheep, not a bunny rabbit. Amen. That's, that's why we encourage people to find out from the Lord who your pastor is, because then that settles the issue or the question, where I go to church. Wherever your pastor is, that's where you go to church. And I'm not talking about no home church either, or, or a, 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 a super center, a Walmart super center, or a wholesale type of an attitude here. Uh-oh, I touched on something. 
It's too easy for these renegade spirits to just open up their homes and say, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm called to do this. So, well, wait a minute. That's, that's okay if you are submitted to a local pastor somewhere. But just to do your own thing and never be submitted and be a part of the local church, that's a concern to me. We're talking about deception in the last days is what we're talking about. I'm assuming you want to stay safe, right? I'm assuming you don't want to be swept away with the delusion or with the delusional. There is a right way and a wrong way to do things. Submitting to the God-ordained, the official authority in the local church is one, the top way for you to stay safe. I don't know how else to, I can't be any more clear or plain than that. Uh, and I have a wonderful <clears throat> example to show you all the way back in the book of Numbers. So let's head on over. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers. Now how did you find this story? You know what I did? I, uh, I spoke into my phone and I said, hey, uh, hey, Juan, Julio, whatever you, Fernando, whatever you call your, your phone, uh, show me scriptures on um, pride. And this one came up. This was one of the first ones. I'm like, wow. Numbers, where did I tell you to go? Did I tell you the chapter yet? That's because I'm flapping my gums and I didn't get there. Yeah, let's see. Let's go. Actually, let's go. Yeah, that's, that's, that's right. That's exactly right. How, however, I want to show you, I want to show you chapter 16. That, but you're right, Russ. That's a good one. If you can, read chapter 14. But I want to show you this in chapter 16 only because I want to get this to you before I forget. Because <laughs> we got a lot. There's so much going on here. So we're talking about deception in the last days on the increase. And who is it that's going to lead the Christians astray? Unofficial leaders, unofficial quote unquote ministry gifts who are full of themselves. How do you lead the sheep astray? Through the, through the leader. That's how you lead sheep astray. If you got the leader, whoever the leader is, and he's gone off in Never Never Land, the sheep are going to follow him to Never Never Land. But if you've got the leader who's called of God and ordained and anointed and appointed by God, as he follows Christ, you can follow the leader, and he'll lead you in the right direction. So primarily what's going to happen is people that are off in deception is because they're following one of these voices of the su supposed apostles or prophets or self-set-in self uh, minister ministry gifts. Now, I'm not saying all of them are. I'm not saying that at all because clearly in our opening scripture, Jesus gave gifts. He gave the apostle. And so there are apostles and prophets that the Lord gave. There are evangelists that the Lord gave, and there are pastors and teachers that the Lord gave. But on the flip side, the antithesis or the antichrist of that is self-called, following the spirit of Lucifer. I mean, Lucifer got himself in trouble, and so did a third of the angels. So think about the angels that followed him. Huh, you think there were any regrets there? Like, uh-oh. What have we done? Be careful, is what I'm trying to tell you tonight. So and look at this in number 16. I'll start with the King Jimmy, but then I got a, two other versions I want to read to you. So in the King Jimmy, it says, Now Korah, the son of uh, Izhar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and, and Dathan, and Abram, the sons of Eliab, and on, on the, the son of uh, Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men, and they rose up before Moses and certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. All right, now, let, chief, let's go to the living, uh, new living, new living, the NLT, and that will really clarify and make this easy for you. Now, if you can get the, uh, the NLT up there, I'll read it from the, uh, the screen back there. You have NL, new NLT? You have that? Uh, the, uh, verse, we're going to start right there, verse 1, 2, and 3. So we'll start at verse 1. Okay, so this is, this is the 
NLT. One day Korah, son of Izhar, a descendant of Koath, son of Levi, conspired with Dathan and Abram, the sons of Eliab, and on, or on, however you pronounce it, O N on, I guess, son of Peleth, uh, from the tribe of Reuben, verse 2. Watch this. They incited a rebellion against Moses. Who was Moses? Moses was the official, God ordained, God appointed leader to get Israel out of Egyptian bondage and over to the promised land. And it says they incited a rebellion against Moses along with 250 other leaders of the community, all prominent members of the assembly. And verse 3, they united against Moses and Aaron and said, you have gone too far. The whole community of Israel has been set apart by the Lord. Well, that's true. They, they were, absolutely. And he is with all of us, absolutely the truth. What right do you have to act as though you are greater than the rest of the Lord's people? Now, this is interesting because they were right. The Lord, they were set apart. These are the Lord's chosen people. And God was with them. 100% absolute truth. But watch. What right do you have to act as though you are greater than the rest of the Lord's people? What right do I have? I am the one that God set in for this leadership position here. That's the right that I have. God called me to do it. I didn't call myself. Moses didn't want the job. Moses could have said, guys, I didn't want this job. I tried to get out of it. God wouldn't let me. And these are leaders these are men of renown, as the King James said. These are leaders in the community. These are ministry, uh, other ministry leaders, if you will. Let's just, let's just be as, as clear as I know how. People that are going to be led astray during the end times that we're in right now, it's going to be hard to tell the difference because there's truth in what was said there. Hey, we're all God's people. Yep. Hey, we're all under this covenant of grace. Yep. Hey, we all have the Spirit of, of God within us. Yep. Hey, we are all new creations in Christ. Yep. Who does this pastor think he is telling me, telling us that we have to submit to him? I didn't tell you that. The Word of God says that. That's what the Word of God says. This is not some dict dictatorship or a tyrannical thing or somebody's on an ego trip here. This is because God's looking for you to be safe during this last day that we're in. And, I, and I, they, incited, they incited them. It was a rebellion. It was a rebellion against the official ordained leader. Well, who else rebelled against the ordained leader and got thrown out of heaven? Who else was that? It was Lucifer. So there's a characteristic, there's certainly something very defining, discernible, and distinct that you'll be able to recognize. It's the same characteristic operating today that operated in heaven when Lucifer rose up and said, Hey, I'm the anointed cherub. Hey, are you, are you other guys, are you, are you guys with me? Because we're it, man. We're up here doing this thing that God made us to do. I'm anointed. I, in fact, I'm beautiful. Check me out. And so it's going to be easier than ever before to be duped. Well, he's God's chosen. He's God's anointed. Just look at him. Look at his disposition. Look at his demeanor, or use the word deportment if you want. I mean, his skills, his command of the English. There's something about this man when he looks into your eyes. He knows his stuff. Besides that, he makes more time for me than my pastor ever did. Boy, I hear that one. If I've heard it once, I've heard it a thousand times. You know, I know you're busy. Yeah, I'm busy being your pastor. I don't let the devil dupe you into thinking he ain't got time for me. What do you think I do? What do you think I'm doing with my 24 hours every day, seven days a week, eight days a week, really? 26 and a half hours a day. I'm busy being your pastor. Be very careful. Be very, very careful because what they said was right. Hey, we're God's people. You are. Absolutely. 
I got to tell you something, man. And I'm going to read this to you from the, from the message. I have the message up here. I got to tell you something. God, didn't, God vindicated Moses and Aaron. The earth swallowed up them rascals, man. Took them away. Sucked them right down. Getting on his high horse one day. I don't, I don't know if you have that chief in the system, but I've got it here. In fact, this is the... You got it. Oh, my look. Wow. Man, you're good, chief. But here's the thing. I was looking in this Bible that I got from Paulie, and, and the heading on top of verse, uh, chapter 16, it's called The Rebels. The Rebels. It's the rebellious spirit that operates in all those who are unofficial. You may be God's people. You may, you may have the Spirit of God as well. But remember, Jesus gave some to be apostles, some to be, pro right? So getting on his high horse one day, Korah, son of Izhar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, along with a few Reubenites, Dathan and Ab Abram, sons of Eliab, and on, son of Peleth, in verse 2, rebelled against Moses, like Lucifer rebelled against God. He had with him 250 leaders of the congregation of Israel, prominent men with positions in the council. In verse 3, they came as a group and confronted Moses and Aaron, saying, you've overstepped yourself. This entire community is holy, and God is in their midst. So why do you act like you're running the whole show? OMG. Why do you act like that? Well, I would certainly hope that your God-ordained pastor would act like he is the God-ordained leader that God made him to be. And it doesn't mean that I'm smarter than anybody else. It doesn't mean that I'm better than anybody else, that I know as much as anybody else. That's not it at all. But you do have to align yourself with God's program. That's what I said to you, is that God has a program for, uh, for you to align yourself with in order for you to stay safe. Certain attitudes of the heart, the spirit of arrogance, is going to get you into trouble. In fact, the Bible says it's going to lead to your destruction. And if you cannot submit yourself to your pastor, well, then that is a problem. And you watch, you mark my words and you watch as we move into the days ahead. You watch and see how many people just kind of, it's factions, they just kind of branch off and do their own thing because God called me into this other ministry. Well, who are you submitted to? Well, God. I'm submitted to the Holy Spirit. I don't have to submit to a man. Mark them. Mark that. Mark the ones who leave the local sheepfold, the local assembly, and just kind of go out and do their own thing um, with no authority over them. I'm not saying that God doesn't call people to go out. and I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying you got to have somewhere, someone, somewhere that you are submissive to. You have to. I mean, it that's, that's, that's God's plan to keep you safe. Because Jesus said there's many, they're, they're going to lead a lot of people astray. Well, what's the harm, though? What's the harm? Don't you want God's best for your life? Don't you want to avoid certain disastrous situations? I mean, don't you want to be on track with God's plan and program? After all, at the end, you know, there's going to be rewards that I assume you knew about that we're going to be rewarded for our behavior and for what we accomplished, but there's going to be a whole lot of stuff that's going to get burned up too that didn't amount to anything because you just decided it's what you wanted to do. You know, it's kind of funny to, <clears throat> through the years to watch the way think people come and go, the ebb and flow of this, um, and it's really, really sad uh, because I've, in, in our own church, I've had people rise up against me, rise up against this ministry, and uh, one thing that the Lord told me, uh, and I believe this is true for every ordained leader, every ordained minister, I believe that the anointing that God puts upon them and is within them will remove the burden and destroy the yoke of bondage. So anybody that comes to be a burden, a yoke, any kind of bondage and, and do, do harm there, I believe that anointing is enough to remove that. That's why a lot of times people can't stay. And so what they'll do is they'll say, that pastor is offensive. Uh, good cover, isn't it? 
you know, or, or here's another one. All he does is talk about the same stuff over and over and over. I need more meat than that. He's, he's not giving us meat. He's giving us regurgitated stuff. He, you know, we're just over here chewing the cud with him. Well, you can look at it any way you want. The excuses are going to be very clever. They're going to make a lot of sense. We're all God's people. We are the chosen ones. Who do you think you are? What makes you think that you have the right and you, can, we, you call the shots here, Buster? Well, God. That's who. It's amazing, isn't it? That's why you know, churches, and I'm just going to have to say it. I hope I don't get anybody too mad here. You know, churches that have unspiritual men and women running their, uh, their church, they call them uh, their deacon-possessed boards. Uh, <coughs> no, <they're laughs> they call them boards. Uh, these people, here's the thing that makes me laugh. These are men and women, just like in number 16, leaders. Leaders. And they have this position of authority where, you know, they can hire and fire a pastor, where they tell a pastor what to do and where to go and all that other jazz. And, uh, and they're not even spiritual, as far as I'm concerned. They don't have the anointing. And they're running the show. The one who has the anointing is the set man or woman in that church. And that board should come alongside and say, hey, we're here to help you. Tell us how we can help you so we can help you with this church and help, uh, you know, help fulfill the vision and chase after the vision that you cast. Who's the vision caster? Unspiritual men and women called the church board? No, that's, they, they don't, who are they to cast the vision? You follow what I'm saying? So just in case, and in, in, you know, I know I'm preaching to the choir here tonight, this is the advanced class, just in case you're tempted to think, are we doing this the right way? Well, yeah, for the last 25 years, we've done it the right way. We've endeavored to do it the right way, and we have men and women who come alongside and help. Praise the Lord. Official ordained roles. And the rebellion against these roles won't be so easy to recognize at the end because, like I was mentioned, mentioning to you before, changing the, you know, right underneath our nose, aggression against someone else is now being called the peacekeeping mission. Yeah, okay. You know, and, and, and similarly, you know, the question came up and said, you know, somebody actually said, so you're telling me that if an intruder comes into your home and you defend your home and your life and your property, that you're saying your stuff is more important than that intruder's life. Well, no, I don't think that's at all what was being said. See the twisting that happens? And then people who are not sharp enough to, to know what's happening. Yeah, I said sharp enough because they become dull through the world's programming. The world's program dulls you. But the program of the Holy Spirit will sharpen you and make you alert. And, and you'll, you'll pick up on these things. And you say, that's not right. Well, we don't need a pastor anymore. We've advanced and progressed beyond that. Really? Since when did that happen? Well, the church, it, it's progressive. Don't you know that? Don't you know that this is progressive and we keep progressing? Well, you know, the funny thing is, the funny thing is Jesus in, in, in Hebrews, I mean, obviously, God bless you, we're told <coughs> so much the more as you see the day approaching, the day of the Lord, as you see that day approaching, that you should be gathering more, not less. But yet some people got it in their minds that, well, no, you know, we're educated now, we're progressive. And I actually have people tell me this all the time. I am gathered together with God in the park. Well, that's good. In addition to church, right? Well, no, I don't, I don't, I don't really have a church because yeah, I don't like the way churches are run now. And besides, you know, it's like, well, no, that's just an excuse. I'm telling you, you need the local church in these last days more than ever. But it has to be a local church with an officially ordained, appointed pastor, shepherd, teacher. It has to be. Otherwise, you're just kidding yourselves. Because a lot of these uh, characters, what they do is they just come in, you know, they just kind of like a flash in a pen and then they move on. And they're constantly, you know, what, but, but the excuse is, the excuse is, well, the Lord is leading me out now into this. Other. No, the Lord, the Lord didn't even lead you here to begin with. First of all, that's phony baloney. So thank God, 
for the genuine, the official ministry gifts that are called, they are official, they are anointed, they are appointed, they are there to serve you. They are there to serve me. They are there to serve us. And, and the Lord has made it very clear that he gave some, not all, some. And he also made it very clear that in the end, during the last days, there's going to be false prophets that come and lead many astray. I, I'm telling you, I, I have to chuckle. I get a big kick out of this because I've never in my life seen this title of prophet or apostle thrown around so generously. I'm like, oh, oh, he's a prophet now? Oh, he's an apostle now? Oh, yeah. You know, like one guy, I heard one guy say, you know, well, he described the, the role of the apostle. He said, well, the apostle has more authority in the spiritual realm now, so my prayers are more effective for you. I thought, I don't know that that's biblical. Yeah, yeah. But, but yet his congregation just started calling him apostle. And so I referenced it, and this is, this is, this is, pretty well generic in general because it's happening everywhere. It's pretty well generic. And I said, well, wait, who, is, who are we talking about? Oh, our apostle or our prophet now, whatever they elevated this person to. Uh, and I said, but, but are they still your pastor? Oh, yeah, but he's just got more authority now. No one has more authority in the local church than that pastor. I'm sorry. I mean, and, and that's just the way that it is. So, it's better for you to say, listen, I'm not running around trying to find the latest and greatest word from prophet so-and-so or apostle so-and-so. I'm looking to receive what I need through my pastor. And the uh, prophet or the evangelist or the, uh, the other one there, yeah, the apostle, it'll validate, it'll confirm, it'll come alongside the local pastor. I love it when um, other ministry gifts validate and confirm and support the role of the local pastor. I love that. It works so good together. Um, just be mindful that God didn't make this complicated, but it's going to be so important that you stay connected because it's going to get easy to get duped, easier and easier to get duped. <laughs>